with a question from Sean. Sean, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey Paige, Sean McFarland with the Hartford Current. Uh, you guys are down by 10 with a few minutes left in the third quarter. The offense had kind of stalled out a little bit and then you guys go on that 19-0 run. What from your vantage point kind of changed in you guys offensively at that stage? Uh, I think just keeping up our movement. Um, we got kind of stagnant and just watched everybody do their own thing with the ball. And once we got that ball movement better and once we start pushing and transition and getting easier buckets um, against a really tough defense in half court, um, I think that opened up the game for us. Next question is from Emma. Emma, please state your name and affiliation and unmute yourself. Hi, Paige. Emma Bachelary from Sports Illustrated. Uh, at the beginning of this tournament, Coach Daly was asked if you have another gear that you can shift your game into. And she said that you do, and that comes out when the game is really physical. Uh, this was obviously a pretty physical game, and it did look like you kind of had an extra gear there. there. Um, can you describe wh what that means to you to kind of shift up to play into that physicality? Yeah, I think it's just um, coming in. I knew the game was going to be physical, especially against Baylor. They're a really physical, tough, and strong team. Um, so just trying to get that mindset in before the game and making sure I was ready for that um, mentally and physically. Um, that was really huge for me and the whole team. Um, but I was just trying to do, and our whole team was just trying to perform enough in, in order for us to win. Next question is from Douglas. Douglas, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Paige. Doug Bonjour with uh, Hearst Connected Media. I just wanted to know uh, if you could discuss the matchup with DD and kind of how um, how – the game shifted when when she went out how big of an impact was that yeah i mean she's a terrific player on both sides of the ball um she does great things for them offensively and, and i mean her defense speaks for itself um she's been a contender for national defensive player of the year uh a lot of her years playing in college so i think i think when she, we she went out um obviously you hate to see somebody get injured um but i think we just try to take advantage of it um defensively um, and attack their guards, attack the paint, try to just drive and kick um, and get just get our feet into the paint um, and create shots for each other. Um, and then offensively, she's um, the point guard for them. She does everything for them. Um, she makes every everything easy for them on the off offensive end. So I think that was a huge change in momentum. Um, but I think it was a huge focus for us just to play our game on both sides of the ball. Next question is from Dom. Dom, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yeah, hi, Paige. Dom Amori from the Hartford Current. Uh, what does it mean to, to your team, particularly uh, as a young team, to face a test like this, to face a kind of a crisis moment like, like this when you were down 10 and come through it? What, what, what type of growth do you think took place in that short period tonight? Yeah, I think it's um, it spoke for our mentality the whole season of just facing adversity and taking it with our chin and just fighting back. Um, they hit us. Um, they went on their runs. Basketball is a game of runs, so we just try to stay confident. And we just didn't want to go home, and we wanted to keep competing um, and make it to the Final Four. And I think we just really strung together. I think that's the biggest thing for our team is just coming together when times are tough and sticking together um, and never losing that confidence. Next question is from Donnie. Donnie, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Donnie Woods here with World Exposure Report. Paige Buckets, <laughs> um, do you think do you think Gino's happy that um, do you think you shot enough tonight to make Gino happy? And um, you know you had some nights where you really filled it up, but doing this on this type of stage. What was this night like for you? And did you envision this growing up as a little kid? Uh, I think Coach is never satisfied with anything that I do. So even after the game, he was yelling at me about not waiting for a screen on one of the last plays. So, I mean, we have two more games to go. Um, hopefully on Friday we'll get that Final Four matchup, um, and then we want to win and compete for the national championship. So I don't think any of us are satisfied. Um, with Obviously we're going to celebrate the win tonight and just be – excited and happy and proud of each other for what we did tonight. Um, but we still have that killer mentality going into the Final Four. Um, but, I mean, as a little kid, 
I would be outside at the park shooting hoops, uh, envisioning these moments, but you, you never really know if you're going to get those chances and opportunities. And that's where God kicks in. Um, I know I wouldn't be here without him and just the confidence and experiences and opportunities he's, he's given me. I've just tried to shine and just sort of make him famous and use my light that he's given me to shine on him. So these opportunities, you kind of dream, dream of them as a kid, um, but you can get there with strong work ethic and faith and just trusting God. Next question is from Charlotte. Charlotte, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, this is Charlotte Carroll with The Athletic. Just to, to follow up on you sticking together with your teammates, what were those conversations like in the huddles when you guys were down 10 or what were you guys kind of talking about or who was pumping you all up? I mean, we all do a really good job of just having little things to say to encourage each other. But in those huddles, it was just making sure we locked in on the defensive end and sort of clogging in the paint and making them shoot outside jumpers and making sure that we were helping each other on defense and not just leaving each other out to dry. And then on offense, we just wanted to reiterate the fact that we needed to have ball movement in order to be successful on the offensive end um, and just attack, attack, attack. Um, and I mean, just the, obviously those are little game plan schemes that we talked about, but just making sure we kept that confidence in each other and we're like, we always told, told each other, it's okay, we got this, this game's not over, we got a whole nother quarter, we got a no, whole nother half. Um, and we always just stuck together and never lost confidence. Next question is from Sunnel. Sunnel, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Paige, uh, Sunil Sundaraj with Global Women's Sports Radio. You know, I, I've asked you, I said, uh, not only during the Big East tournament, but also here during the NCAA tournament about the balance scoring, you know, said that the team has, I mean, you had 10 of your 28 points during that 19-0 run, but I mean, Kristen Williams, 21 points tonight. I think she scored, I think, the last, you know, five points you, you had. Can you just talk about, uh, you know, I said, just having that, and you know, Vina with 11 points as well. I, I don't want to leave her out, uh, Paige. Yeah, I mean, everyone does huge things for this team. Um, you can't take one person away and think you're going to win because we have multiple people that can sort of get a bucket at any time. And I think that's really huge for us um, going into the final four is just making sure we have that balanced scoring and everybody's playing with confidence. Everybody's playing their best basketball. And I think that just comes with our selflessness as a team and as a unit. And that's sort of just U UConn basketball, just making sure we have plenty of people that get involved and can be a threat on offense and on defense. Um, so that's just what we've, we've been doing all season. Um, I, like I said before, we're just not a one-person show. Next question is from Mike Anthony. Mike, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Thank you, Mike Anthony from Hearst, Connecticut. Hi, Paige. Uh, that was wildly entertaining to watch. I'm sure it was wildly difficult to participate in. Can you just describe how tough the situation was, how tough an opponent Baylor was, and what the kind of the rewarding emotions were like when it was over? Yeah, I mean, like I said before, it was a game of runs. Um, we got off to a really hot start, then they came back and made their runs. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, it was a really up and down sort of high anxiety game. Um, but I don't know, we just kind of stuck together. Um, obviously, there was a lot of high stress moments, but we just try to stay together and just play our basketball, um, no matter if we're up 20 or down 20 or it's tied with 20 seconds left. Um, we try to just stick to our game plan and never let it change. Um, but no, nah, at the end, just getting a tough win like that against one of the best teams in the country, it's so rewarding just to hear that final buzzer go off and you win and you make it to the final four. And it's really unexplainable, the feeling that you really get from it. Um, it's like a dream come true. Next question is from Howard. Howard, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Paige. Howard Megdahl with The Next. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm wondering, if my math is right, you were seven years old the first time that UConn made the Final Four in this streak of 12. I'm wondering how often in this intervening 12 years you've dreamed of you specifically being at UConn doing it. You talked about being on the playground and whether it's sort of sunk in yet that that chain of players is someone who you're now connected to in terms of that accomplishment. Yeah, it's crazy to be a part of this history we're talking about in the locker room. Um, I think Coach said it was 13 straight years um, that they've been to the Final Four, and I was about six 
when that streak started. Um, and just to be a part of that history, that's really why I, why I came here, just because of the unspoken success that they've had over the years and just all the winning that they've done. And I mean, I watched it on TV as a young kid and I've always been a team player and always have just put winning first. Um, so I, I saw that as a young kid and I was like, man, I, I want to be a part of that. And I worked for it and I prayed for it. And I don't know, it's just surreal. Sort of, I grew up watching like Stephanie Dolson. She was my favorite player growing up from UConn, um, ho hosting that trophy. And I mean, it's crazy to be a part of that sort of history right now. Next question is from Chip. Chip, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Paige, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Congrats, good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, a year ago about this time, you had your last game uh, canceled and here you are in the final four. Can you kind of describe what this is like? Start from that point to where you're at now. Yeah, I mean, that was a really hard time for me, just the start of the shutdown of the whole country. Um, but that's when I really started connecting with my faith and with God and knowing that he always has a plan for me through the ups and the downs. Um, just always keeping that faith and that trust that everything is going to work out and everything happens for a reason. Um, and it's, yeah, it's crazy. Just like a year ago today, um, my dreams were sort of shattered as a senior. Uh, wanting to go out on top, um, undefeated my junior and senior year, just wanted to win that state championship. But if you could tell me a year ago today that I would be in this position, I would be ex super ex excited and happy and ecstatic just for it. Um, but yeah, it's it's really surreal, just the sort of turnaround that happened. We have time for one more question from Kurt. Kurt, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yeah, Paige, uh, you and Aaliyah seem to always be there in critical defensive uh, moments. What does it say about you and her as freshmen being in the middle of moments like that when you need the defense? Yeah, I think me and Aaliyah, we just try to do everything um, that our team needs of us. Um, we don't really, we try not to think about how we're freshmen and how this is our first year. Because um, really only Kristen and um, Liv have UConn uh, tournament experience. So we know that this team is very young and really inexperienced when it comes to tournament time. So we just try to come in and step in and do everything that our team needs us to do to win um, and just try not to have like a freshman mentality about it. Thank you, Paige, for your time and good luck going forward. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We will now be joined by head coach Gino Oriema. Use this time to raise your hand if you would like to ask a question. We are now joined by Coach Oriema, and we will get started with a question from Vicki. Vicki, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Jeno, congratulations. Um, th Thank you. This streak of the, th the 13 straight Final Fours, um, it seems like every one is special. Like the last one, Katie Lou had, you know, seven threes, and you beat Louisville, and then Today, you get like a great Baylor team. This game had everything possible in it, uh, ups and downs, and a 19 to nothing run, which is unbelievable against the best defensive team in the country. And uh, how, how do you feel about all that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot to digest. But um, uh, right now, you know, you, you can. You know, you can only think about this particular one. You know, you don't necessarily uh, are thinking the other 12. You know, you, you're you not, you know, we have 10 kids on our team that have not ever been to one Final Four. If you think, I mean, so that to me is what, um, you know, the excitement is all about. 
you know, those 10 kids have ne never been to one, and they're getting an opportunity to go to their very first. And, um, uh, and yet, you know, Jamel and, uh, you know, CD and myself and some of the other, you know, people that work here uh, that have been to a bunch of these, you know, we, we obviously feel, you know, incredibly fortunate to be in that situation. And, um, and they're all special. That's why I tell, try to tell everybody when they say, you know, which one, how does this one feel compared to all the rest? They all feel, they all feel amazing. There's never been one that felt bad. It's like Christmas. You know, people say, how was your Christmas? I never had a bad one. And so there's never, they're all amazing. They're all amazing. Thank you. Next question is from Doug Feinberg. Doug, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. <sighs> Hey, Coach, Doug Feinberg, DAP. Hey. I know you didn't have a great angle on it, but uh, Coach Moki's claiming after the game that that last play was a foul based on replay she's seen and such. And you seen it, I know it's part of the basketball game, whether they call it or not, but have you seen that last play? And was it one of the situations where it could have gone 50-50 or was it a foul at all? I don't know. I haven't seen it. But I'd also like to look at all the fouls in the first half where they shot 11 free throws and we shot two. So I don't think I'm going to go back and check all those, and I'm not going back and check on the last one. So, you know, a call is a call, and you got to live with it. And, um, you know, the, the officials are going to make the call they think they, they need to make. Next question is from... Daniel, Daniel, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Gino. Daniel Connolly from the UConn blog. Considering two of your last NCAA tournament trips ended on buzzer beaters, how good was it for a defensive stop to win the game? Well, we put ourselves in that situation, you know. Um, that we made it in incredibly difficult on ourselves um, you know, I, I thought, uh, you know, Dee Dee Richards getting hurt, I think, um, probably, um, opened up some, some things for us defensively, you know, on offense, and we were able to take advantage of that. Um, but, you know, late in the game with, you know, a couple of violations, a couple of missed free throws, and, um, you know, but, but we made enough plays, you know. In a game like this, you know, just like in those games that we lost on buzzer beaters, um, you know, the, a, a lot happens along the way, way before that play that, um, you know, that, that, that accounts for winning or losing the game. Um, so... You know, if you coach long enough and you're around long enough, you're going to, you know, you're going to win some at the end um, and you're going to lose some at the end. You put yourself in enough of those situations. And, um, you know, we went on that 19-0 run. And, um, you know, to Baylor's credit, you know, they came right back. You know, um, you know we came back from down 10. And they, you know, we went up nine, I think. We went from down 10 to up nine. And they could have easily, you know, um, gotten down 15, just like we could have easily gotten down 15. But they're a great team. And they came back like, like, like we knew they would. And we knew we were going to have to keep making one play after another all the way to the end. Next question is from Chip. Chip, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Gino, Chip Scoggins with the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Uh, obviously, you spent a lot of time with Paige during the recruiting process, but are, what are some things that you learned about her uh, having a chance to be around her every day in practice? And then also, is it true you were Joe Sensor's college roommate? <laughs> yes, it's true. I was Joe Sensor's college roommate. <laughs> And uh, people up in Minnesota will, will be uh, 
will be happy to know that he was probably a better baseball player than he was football player. And that's saying something when he was all pro. Uh, probably one of the nicest and uh, most loyal men I've ever been around in my life. Um, Paige does a lot of things that you can't explain. Um, they're, they're, and, and believe me, they're, there's a lot of things that Paige has got to learn to handle that she doesn't handle so great right now. But what Paige can do is Paige can sense the moment. Like all great players, she can sense the moment when it's time, you know, what's needed in that time, what's necessary. And she has the ability to fill that moment. Not everybody does. And you could see that, you know, in high school and, you know, Coach Koss saw it, you know, every day for however many years. And um, our fans and fans around the country are starting to see it now on a regular basis. Next question is from Michelle. Michelle, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Yes, Michelle Vopel from ESPN.com. Coach, I, I imagine you're not going to like this question, but I do have to <laughs> ask. Um, everybody from LeBron James actually to your daughter tweeted that was a foul at the end. Really? Think, yeah. Do, do you think this is just sort of, in some ways, the nature of sports? Because like you said, I guess you could go back through a game and check, but right. when games end that way, um, that, that, that just tends to be what people focus on? Maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't think LeBron's ever won a game on a bad call by the other team, by the other officials, do you think? <laughs> I probably doubt it. I probably doubt and in his career, he's ever won a game and decided to give it back because he looked at it and went, that was a foul. <laughs> so it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, uh, the officials made one time I asked one of the officials, how did Paige end up on the ground with the Baylor player on, on top of her on loose ball? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> that was the answer. He said, I don't know. So, you, you know, you want to go back and check every single call throughout the entire game and then add them all up and you, you don't that's the nature of that's the nature of sports you know that's the nature of sports we probably we probably fouled a number of times during the game and we didn't get called for it they probably fouled a number of times during the game and didn't get called for it or we got easy you know we got free throws because of non fouls i mean you can go back and forth the whole thing you know, the bottom line is the, the officials did what they're what they're going to do. And if they would have said it was a foul, I'd be on the other end going, you can't make that call, make that call a foul. So it is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and apologize for it. And people are going to, you know, want to talk about that the rest of the week. You're welcome to do that. It's not going to change the outcome. And it's not going to make me feel bad that you that you say it was a foul. <laughs> Next question is from <clears throat> Carl. Carl, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Carl. I'm getting there. Carl, uh, Carl Adam from the Journal Inquirer. Uh, Gino, we like to talk numbers. At least I like to talk numbers. Uh, 13 consecutive Final Four appearances and... The other teams uh, will have one consecutive Final Four appearance. That'll be the second longest current streak after tomorrow. Can you try to put some perspective into what you guys have done in the regional final and in a game that you used to say was the hardest one to win? Well, for sure, this game is the hardest one to win. And, um, uh, and for sure, I thought when they first announced the brackets, I thought something's not, something doesn't look right here. If, 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 you, if you look at the seeding, you're, you're telling me that Baylor is the seventh seeded team in this tournament. If we're the number two 
number one. That Baylor's number seven. So that decision is a lot bigger than the decision made by the officials to make a call or not. Trust me when I tell you that. And I know Kim will agree with me on that. She won't agree with me about the foul call, but she'll agree with me on that, on that point. So to, to have to win this game to go to the Final Four and to have to beat a team like that, you know, that's clearly, you know, um, seated way lower than they belong. It just added to the intensity of it and the, the difficulty of it and everything. I mean, and, and this was harder than winning some of the national championship games that we've won. Without question. Without question. This game was tougher than, 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 than a handful of national championship games or any Final Four game that you want to mention. So, yeah, winning this game, you know, given how it played out, you know, getting down 10, that, that's, um, that's, an amazing, that's an amazing accomplishment by these young kids. Next question is from Alexa. Alexa, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Gino. It's Alexa Filter from the Hartford Current. Uh, in the locker room, I think it was Chris Sinner and Avina said that, I guess when the team was down 10, you kind of called them out for looking shell-shocked or like they were about to lose or ready to give up or something like that. What did you, I guess, say to them at that point, and what did it take for them? Uh, obviously, you pointed to DD going out, but what did it take for those, young, like you said, the young kids to turn things around and turn a 10-point deficit into a, um, to have the belief that they could go up and um, retake the lead? You know, when, when you're in this situation, um, you, if you've never been in this situation, you don't know how you're going to react to it. And these kids have never been in this situation. You know, they, they never have. You know, Avina has not been. Kristen and, and, and Olivia you know, have been on teams that have been in this situation, but they haven't been. And then you've got the other, all the other kids. So when it started to get away from us, even one of their teammates even said, you know, you guys need to change the look on your face, man. They, they started to question and doubt and started to lose faith. And I, I, I basically said, if this is how it's going to be, then, you know, let's just go home and, and say, we tried. <laughs> or let's get out and play, you know, show some toughness. You know, that, in, the toughness, stay with our offense. Let's get a stop. Somebody step in front of somebody and take a charge. Let's do the things that, you know, the fundamental – the right things to do that that good teams do and stop worrying about oh my god we might lose and uh, you know Aubrey took a couple charges then we you know we started to play better defensively and that started to fuel our offense and it gave us a lot of confidence and you know Paige making shots really ignited everyone else that that just got everybody you know feeling much you know much better about themselves which teammate called uh, called them out for their how they were looking, their lack of confidence? Anna. Anna, my girl. Yeah. And she did it in English. I didn't even know she knew what to say. I turned around and looked right. at her. I said, even she knows it. I said, I'm not making it up. Look, even she says it. Because, you know, there was just, there was this look on their face like, we don't know that we can do this. We don't know if we can do this. And, we have time. Uh, you know, we had, we had to figure out a way. I said, look, you, you only have two choices, guys. You either do the things that we, we do every day or we go home. It's not, it's, it's not that complicated. 
It's, it's not complicated at all. And I think they didn't want to go home. I think they'd rather keep playing basketball. So that's what happened. We have time for one more question, and that'll come from Emma. Emma, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Emma Bachelary from Sports Illustrated. Um, curious about uh, preparing for the physicality of this game, you know, knowing the kind of style they play and what you saw from them on the floor tonight that you guys had to adjust to. You can't prepare. I mean, the only way we would have been able to prepare would be if uh, our practice squad that we left at home, uh, you know, if we had them with us and that, excuse me, every day we had them simulate that. And even then, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to, um, to simulate, you know, their talent, their aggressiveness, their length. Um, it, it's just very difficult. You know, they, 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 don't, uh, they don't look like any other team in the country. They don't play like any other team in the country. And that's why it was, they're so hard to play against. And you don't get ready for something like that, you know, by, you know, just going to practice every day and playing against yourselves. You know, playing against our second team wasn't going to get us ready for something like this. You know, we had to experience it firsthand. Um, and then after a while, um, you know, to their, to, to their credit, I mean, it was a great game all the way around because we started the game like this, you know, and, and um, you know, I think it was 12 to four, one point, I don't even know, 16 to something. And, um, and they came right back at us, you know, and we hung in and they came right back and we hung in and they came back and, you know, we went in at halftime and we were fortunate. We thought, man, to only be down two, um, you know, we're fortunate. And then when we came out and got down 10, uh, there was a feeling of, uh, on, on, on the team. The kids felt, you could see it, as we talked about, that it's gotten away from us. It's, it's, it's gone. And we got it back. And then when we thought we had put them away, <laughs> they came back. So it was just a great, it was a great battle by two, you know, great teams. And um, you know, went down to the last, the last possession. All right, coach. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck going forward. Thank you very much. That concludes this post game news conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCAA digital.